All right, welcome everyone. We're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for My, My Hero, Hero Academia, Academia season, season 5, episode 9. Shine! <laughs> yeah. Bakugo. Indeed. He has a plan. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see that his plan is both a combination of typical bak Bakugo behavior and actually not typical Bakugo behavior. So Something. not just Lord Explosion murder? Right, right. But, yeah. you know. Also, Lord also Explosion, having some of that, Lord yeah. Explosion murder, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, uh -huh. yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of how the fight's going to go down, um, we seem to be kind of in that trading period here, where mm -hmm. um, this fight could go either way. Because I really do feel like the fifth fight is the one where it really is supposed to go either way. Uh huh. Because it's well, Deku's fight, exactly. But also because it's going to have Shinso again in it. Yep. And then, of course, if uh, Monoma is in there as well. Right, that it's just, be its own you thing. know, double trouble. Yeah. yeah. And as we're in episode nine here, that means we're pretty close to where this, you know, arc's going to be over. Yep. And then they'll be moving on to what's next. And yeah, I, I'm kind of excited for that in a, in a, in a way because this, this <laughs> arc is... You know, it's 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 fine. It's fine. The animation right. is, is the wonderful animation times. is excellent, and a yeah. lot of the quirk inter interplay. Yeah, yeah, is really cool. Yeah, it's the it's the yeah. tactics basically. Of, but let's get Bakugo a W because he hasn't gotten a solid one in a while. Yeah, he he does have I would say some 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 space to where we could fit a nice big fat one in there yeah. for him. So y'all, without further ado, let's get into this. All right, everyone, now be sure to go check out the reaction portion of the video in the description below, then come back here for the discussion. Okay. Okay, yeah, that, that was that was the best fight. That, that was, was the best, best fight, fight thus far. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because it was short. I'm saying that, like, literally because the tactics mm -hmm. and the team work coordination, while all really shown, mm -hmm. was actually shown. And, yeah, and all of them made sense in a, in a really simple way. Right. If Bakugo got restrained, okay. Then mm -hmm. Sato comes in and breaks him out of it. Exactly. It was the, the fight was very dynamic. There, with, the, um, with the previous matches, I think this is what really differentiates it. And, and a lot of it is probably because it ended up going more in Class 1A's favor. Oh, okay. But because in the in the matches where class 1b would like have some crazy upset some quirk that you know worked really well or something like that since we hadn't been introduced to it we had to spend by that a lot point, of time explaining we had to spend it. a lot of time explaining it and then also show how that is something that class 1a can't beat right right or and, or show that that's that's part of the ability of class 1b's like one quirk there but it can also you know right. do xyz which and is, then there's which is four of to, them on the team and you know and all that stuff. Yeah, it's just tough to deliver in a in a uh in a really well paced i would say manner and but, but yeah we know all of these characters quirks here from class yep. 1a really well We've seen the parts where they do not work as well, and we've seen the parts where they work really well. Right, and yeah. all of the all of the things, all of the quirks at play, were basically things that made that added more energy to the scene. The only exception maybe is that Jiro was getting countered with the whole like, oh, creating a bunch of like movement everywhere and stuff. Mm -hmm. But even then, that adds to the tension because you don't know where the enemy is, right? right? And yeah. and that totally makes sense, right? Like the whole like like uh, not. Information basically is key on the battlefield, right? Knowing so, is half the battle. Knowing is half the battle. So the fact that they're like, all right, well, Bakugo is strong, but we'll just make it so that they don't know where we are. Right. So they can't go in and attack us and get mm -hmm. our weakest uh, in terms of defense, which was the the glue guy. Yep. And you you noted that rather rather well is that in some ways he was always set up as their weak link in terms of being able to well what would he do if somehow they just got past his glue no right. he's, he's done he so, is the he is the i will be hiding somewhere and then do my thing hopefully that immobilizes people and then run at regular right. human speeds you yeah know. yeah and it it, it worked mm -hmm. in the beginning in that yep. the plan that they had to okay you know uh, we have a situation where uh, they've got the tape everywhere and stuff. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's that's nice, but oh, now you just created a pathway for all my glue. So right. my glue is going to go all over that and then sticks to it. And they're yep. going to be like, oh, okay, now we have to be careful. Suddenly I just cut 
all these pillars, all these pipes, all this stuff yeah, down. Guy. Yeah, that was and crazy. And all this collapses down onto them. Mm -hmm. And if that hit them, it would have been all over. Yep, especially with the welding guy on top of that. Like, mm -hmm. like there was there was some really good like quirk combinations on Class One B's team, but this is basically what happens when Todoroki can also fly around really fast, <laughs> like. Because because yeah. that that was like that was the reason that Todoroki was able to be beaten. Uh -huh. One, you had a quirk that countered his right, at uh -huh. least his ice, and then yeah. on top of that, he's slow. Right, someone right. can get next to him and take him out. Yeah, you can't really do that with Bakugo. No, like not really. You not you really. almost did. Yeah, but he had someone to cover for him. Yeah, I, I I was just blown away by Bakugo's usage of not just his quirk but also his ability to call shots. That's something that I feel mm. like every team really since this fight or before this fight didn't really have yeah on this level except for maybe in the very beginning with class 1b with the part where they had the one guy on top of the the beast uh yes and yes. and that was kind of cool they had a they had a pretty good communication uh field going in there and that was why shinso was so helpful there because then he mm -hmm. caused them to stop communicating right. out of panic of getting brainwashed again yep so so really good stuff here. The fight being done in an extremely quick amount of time, but in the midst of that, having multiple moments where the tactics worked really well. And then Bakugo also had to drop from the attack kind of maneuver that he's going into mm -hmm. to either kick Jiro out of the way to right. you know save uh, save her to uh, to set set up the team basically for success. And that was basically what he did: is he murder balled it like in a yep. you know, like in a moba. He just like everyone just stack me. We'll ca I'll carry, mm -hmm. and then I'll just CC lock everyone down. And then you guys jump in and right one by one by one by one. It's yeah, and it worked really well. And I feel like the Bakugo demonstrated very nicely here the the balance of basically kind of hogging the spotlight because uh, yeah. because using the moba reference right. If you're if you're matching with a bunch of randos, right? Yes. Everyone wants to be the carry. That's Everyone, the most important yeah. person on the team, and things like that. And that doesn't work. It right? does not work. You need to yeah. actually have team cohesion. And and if someone does have that role, everyone they need to know what they're doing with that role. But everyone else they need to be to working listen. with everyone else. Right. Even even if Listening your shot caller is not perfect, you mm -hmm. need to go in with them because right. they're not doing this shot call thing on the this is the perfect best thing to do but if we all move together mm -hmm. that means that there's not going to be a moment where for whatever reason the fifth just kind of goes off to go you know farm right. in the middle and you're like what, what, why why yep. no like, you could you could actually just be here and then the encounter where we bumped into four of them would have been a 5v4 in our favor instead of a 4v4 where we're just kind of trading yeah 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 so, Unified yeah. action is almost always better than slightly more optimal, but n not unified action. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. And and that's something where Bakugo, for all his shouting and stuff, yes. given that he has the temperament of being able to actually communicate with his team and, and have there be that understanding and trust that they are working together, mm -hmm. him being brash and yelling and stuff that's very helpful because right. then it's it's okay in the chaos yeah. of battle we know what we're doing because we all know what he's doing right, right. It, it keeps things simple for them so they don't have to think or worry about a bunch of the things a, th a bunch of the things that the other teams had to think about or worry right. so in a lot of ways bakugo might have not known this was would have been the best strategy actually going into this whole thing mm -hmm. but he watched the other teams do their fights and every single team had some area where they slipped up in terms of tactics. Right. And his team had basically zero. Mm -hmm. The main thing that he didn't have, really, was that he gave the other team slight bit of tempo, slight bit of sente, if you will, for uh, them to execute their plan at all in the beginning. Right. And that's just because the quirk of the girl that couldn't. Split uh, herself, herself yeah. yeah, yeah, worked so well against Jiro in right. the beginning, right? And but, that's something where you know, th and again, this is what they did without having information on the other class, on the other team's quirks, and that's and yeah, that's, it's it's debatable because people have said like, no, they all know what their quirks are, but then some of the fights they don't act as if they do. Yeah. so it's class one B has been the only class planning around the other team's quirks. Yep. We have we have never gotten any thoughts 
from Class 1A about well, the other teams. No, we, we have for, like, very specific fights. Uh, okay. Yeah. Very yeah. specific the, fights. For, for, there, there are probably some but exceptions. Not across the board. Not across the board. Yeah, that's and the that's, point. Yeah. And, and it could be something where they do know and they just don't think about it. Mm -hmm. But and if so, that, that communicates different things, right? Because Class 1A has kind of been on, like, a high horse, if you will. Mm-hmm. Because they've been in the spotlight with regards right. to villain activity and things like mm -hmm. that, they've gotten a lot of live experience, right? Yeah. But a lot of them may, might have underestimated, you know, some of 1B. And then as mm -hmm. a result of that, it doesn't work. And, yeah. you know, if you know the enemy you're fighting, then that's that's a that's big a advantage, lot. right? That's a lie, yeah. Yeah, that's huge, yeah. right? And then in Bakugo's case, with how he had the team move, it's just, okay, let's move so fast that whatever plan they have, they can't really... They can't do anything meticulous, right? Because no plan survives contact with the enemy, and then let's just right. stay tight in it and yeah, yeah. Kick ass. I, I, I want to say the the thing that Bakugo executed that was because I don't think the beginning part was some like great battle genius by Bakugo's oh, part. No. I think the beginning part was something where because Sato made the call to just stand under the stuff that was falling and punch it out, mm -hmm. like he was able to at the very least get some of it like off but then bakugo's just overwhelming strength basically just said nope right your plan is is not gonna work here and then he basically just capitalized on that entire bit of little like momentum and just said we go 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 we do not mm -hmm. stop here yep until we get at least one of them and then once they get one it's over you snowball yeah you just snowball and right. as long as the other team is, like, unable to, well, really get away... Right, as long as yeah. you don't make mistakes at that point, you know, yeah. it's done. And it almost worked for Class 1B because of the welding guy. Yeah, like, yeah, that was He that actually was got Bakugo. Mm -hmm. I don't think Bakugo, even though he'll tear his muscles and break his body... And cause crazy explosions and stuff, yeah. I that, don't think he could have exploded off those bits there without probably really not. hurting himself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so Sato being there... Very important. And also, um, I gotta say, Saro, uh, I never would have expected Saro to actually be useful in a fight like this. Other oh, than... I thought he was gonna be the best. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because in season, I believe, three, they built up the idea that he was the best in these environments because he's, spi he's Spider-Man. Oh, okay, and yeah, that's true. In that's these true. environments, mobility is king. Yes, and, and because and, he can operate on the z-axis, unlike most heroes. Right. Yeah, because Bakugo has that, and it's insane. So it's he insane, has that too. Yeah. Awesome. You have two people doing that, and also the fact that this this whole objective was about immobilization, which Sarah is very good at. Also, think. Yeah, I thought Sarah was actually going to be even more useful, and I definitely was right in that he did counter the recommendation girl. But I thought it was just going to be on the fact that he has precision range, hmm. whereas Bakugo is going to explode things that are meant to fall apart where she could just take the hit oh, fall sure. into 40 pieces right and then just retreat and then reform and it's like yeah what are your explosions gonna do well i'm like well at the very least all he needs to do is either just attach himself to a bunch of them fling himself up there the grenade was awesome but the grenade was some that joseph was, joestar yeah. i love just it. brilliant because yep. everyone else forgot about the grenade they're right. like oh i I, I had a magic... I uh, yeah. I didn't use it. Sarah's like, no, 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 no. Every once in a while, they probably have to return to, like, regenerate, reform, mm -hmm. get yep. a little bit of stuff there. So I'm going to send something on the right. way back. Because control does not mean awareness. And that's yes. something that I really appreciate. Yes. It's the, oh, yeah, she can have these things go around and hop on, like, pipes and stuff to fool Jiro. Right. But there's probably less awareness the more spread out or the well, more distant. Well, or at the very least, like... She can control them, but does she have a sense of like what object uh, permanence you know, or, like. or or drag and weight on them? Right, right. You know? Yeah, like, good point. Good like, point. You know, it's it's not like she has eyeballs on them for sure. You know, so all of a sudden it's just oh wait shit, and then and too late. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I also love that Bakugo uh, used uh, items better than Momo did. <laughs> Momo, you could have given out items just like Bakugo did in the beginning. Yeah. Not in some, yeah. like, oh, now that we're all out here, then I can do this. No, no. Mm -hmm. I, I call shame. Bakugo pre-made items, and yep. he can't even normally make, make items. items. Yeah. This just so, shows in a lot of ways how this fight was better than, like, most of the other yes, fights. Like, yes, by because, far. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and, that's, and that's, again, something yeah. where Bakugo put pre-planning into this yes right? he did like, 
because that's that's very helpful, right? Prepar- right. You know, Batman with preparation, right, can you know beat Superman, right? He doesn't even have any powers, right? right? If you have someone, if you have two people with powers and one of them prepares and one of them doesn't, guess who's going to win? Yeah. You know, it's it's not it's not that hard to figure out, even if their powers are very different. Right. And now Bakugo did not you know or mm-hmm. tell them specifically how to use their grenades. Nope, he trusted them. Yeah. Yeah. Here and- you go. And this is the thing that I also wonder if Bakugo is actually really prepared for the world of fighting against villains. Hmm. Is that Bakugo didn't um, didn't come in with a strategy really other than a principle, if this makes sense. Hmm. So, so he came in with a strategy, but he didn't really come in with tactics, if that makes sense. He basically said, we're going to move as a unit. So already he gets a plus because they're moving together, right? Which is important. I understand the avoid AOE so we don't like clump mm-hmm. or anything. But two, he basically said, "When you guys need protection, I'll cover for you. So don't worry about that." But there will be points. But there will be points where you need to break me out because right. I'm going to draw a lot of attention. Mm-hmm. So I need you to do that, and I can't order you to do that. Right. Which means there was trust established mm-hmm. as well. So yeah. he he uh-huh. really set up the battle philosophy more right. than actually even the strategy, if that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, exactly. It's something it's something where you can tell that Bakugo thinks about this stuff all the time. Yeah. Right? And that he takes this very seriously. And so when it turns into an actual war, mm-hmm. yep. oh, you will absolutely want to be around Bakugo. You will want to be on like, his ass. Like you'll be right yep. there and just be, okay, yep. Make the shot. Make the call. Let's right. do this. And and no. I I love it. I love it no. because because Bakugo, you know, his personality is abrasive. a bit extreme. Yeah, it's abrasive, but he walks he walks the walk, and you know, or yeah, he walks the walk. Yeah, he walks the walk. Right. Yeah. He's yeah. he's not just all talk. Right. right. He actually no. he actually does it. He he works harder than anybody else. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like yeah. Like, like the, Deku, you could learn from this because right, it's really the marks of being a good leader. It's mm-hmm. something where the way he does it is not the most likable at times. Ah, but yeah, this is what I was trying to trying to figure out how to say. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, um, with training, there's training where you're uh, consciously so you're consciously competent and then unconsciously competent. Ah, uh, right? sure planning and things like that this is something that momo was actually struggling with earlier right Mm -hmm. in previous seasons is that i can plan but what happens if something surprises me and i'm not able to adapt and i'm not able to adapt the guy specifically there to show what the other side of planning is which is adapting in the midst of it exactly really good at that really good at that and i would say bakugo also this was a demonstration of that right Mm -hmm. because since he has ingrained all of the, the 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 ways of fighting and all of that stuff so deeply within himself he can say, "Yeah, let's just let's just go this way. Make sure we're moving fast. Uh, we don't necessarily have some meticulous plan or anything, but here's here are the, here's the goals, right? Right. These are the things we do. Yeah. These are the tenets, and let's just move fast. Right. There Keep you go. Keep things simple. Yep. One mm-hmm. of the things that uh, Bakugo did was he basically said, "You're going to encounter things that you're not prepared for. Things that will beat you. Right. Don't worry about those things. Make sure that I'm still able to move. Right. And then." When I am, like, stuck, when, yeah. I'm going to have to rely on you. So I can't be asked to tell you guys what to do in those moments. Mm-hmm. You know your quirks. You know you guys. So do it the best way that you can. Right. He did make specific calls at points to keep them on track. And that was, like, the second they pulled back, he's like, hey, ears, wh- where are they? Right. Like, we can't waste any time. Mm-hmm. And all that does is it just keeps them honed in and in the zone. So, right. I, I I have nothing but praise for Bakugo and his, his team here because they all did ridiculously well. Oh, yeah. um, I, I think that I am I'm impressed in that Sato feels like the one that saved them, actually. Yeah. Like, like yeah. really, it did come down to Saro can't untape that. Nope. Jiro can't. Maybe she could sound vibrate, detach them. With a lot of time, you know. With but, a lot but, of time. You don't Bakugo have Bakugo might have been able to break his arm if he boom, explodes. Yeah, eventually just explode way. the things off. But, but that quirk not welded things at the molecular level. The stuff that was attached to his back stayed. was still there at the end of the fight. Mm-hmm. So in, in a lot of ways, Sato was 
absolutely necessary. Oh yeah. And I I rag on Sato because I think he's one of the most like forgotten characters in one. Yeah, day. he doesn't have much of a personality, and his quirk it's is very simple. Very simple. I, I I strong. You yeah. know, and yeah. I, I I sweet boy. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So right. So it, it yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. So all that being said, mm -hmm. looking forward to the next fight, Monoma potentially having um some way that he can maybe use uh, Shinso's quirk in a really cool way, something we've predicted, yep. but we kind of forgot what his time limit duration was. Yeah, it was either 10 minutes or an hour. Yeah, we're not sure about that, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, if he brought a quirk from outside his team into the equation, it'll be a fun yeah. surprise if that happens. Because if there's um, going to be any kind of like, you know, preparation, kind of like what Bakudo, Bakugo did with the grenades... Monoma, Monoma is the one to do that. Is the one to do that. Like and all also, of a sudden, oh no, you can't breathe anymore because there's mushrooms, you know, growing inside your throat right, or something. And, and and also Monoma being someone who was doing all this performance stuff, mm. that could absolutely have been the distraction so that over the course of time they get so annoyed with him and they uh, actively ignore what he's doing. Sure. And then while that's happening, mm -hmm. he's observing every fight and he's in the last fight, yeah. which means he has his pick. Uh -huh. Of Smash players. <laughs> oh yeah, right. Well, and also, also, um, Monoma is an egomaniac. Surprise, I know, right? But as a result, he's motivated. He's motivated, mm -hmm. and and seeing how Bakugo rinsed, well, Bakugo and his team, right? Yes, rinsed yes. Class One B. Yeah, this I would not be surprised. Now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because because it's either you tie with Class One A. Or you lose. Or you lose. Like, it's double or nothing, basically. Like, mm -hmm. you, mm, yep. Mm. Yep. it's half or nothing. Yeah. Right, exactly. So, yeah. so if Monoma did have any reservations before now of the kinds of things that he would do, yep. I don't think he has them anymore. Yeah, I think this is unironically going to be the moment where Monoma pops off. Mm. Mm. I see. <laughs> Hopefully he didn't, like, tap Aizawa or something. Well, I, 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 honestly, the thing I'm most concerned about is the idea that Monoma said that quirk might not work when talking about Shinso. Oh, right. And that really makes me think about what what Monoma is capable of. Yeah, because if Monoma... he's concerned about whether a quirk can be used. Well, because, yeah, like, like, okay, if you could just copy quirks right mm. and you know temporarily of course oh yeah you yeah. would practice with that shit mm -hmm. you would get well very adaptable mm -hmm. you know but like the whole idea of like mm, that quirk is nice but as far as one to temporarily borrow uh you know uh, i don't overwrite you know the the previous one yeah that, that, right that right should exactly be, that should be okay yeah but let's yeah. let's let's have this at a time here but if they go for the trap style where it's they just set up an environment go dark and just wait. I really yeah. want to see a team push the time limit to where it's not about whether a team actually, uh, you know, finishes and captures the whole other team, but they capture like one person and then disappear. Sure. It's yep. just, oh, you messed up. Now we're never going to show ourselves again. Good luck. And Mineta, don't let them hypnotize you because mm -hmm. your fruit rush or ball rush or whatever, it's. It's called pop off. Yeah. Oh, it's it's called that's oh, his quirk. Oh, it is. That's why it's it called pop off. Monoma yeah. Okay. Pop off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If Monoma copies it, or yeah, there's yeah, there's great, so many ways that could go wrong. Great, because yeah. Great brush. Great yeah. brush is his quirk. His hero name. Ah, that's his right. Hero okay. Name. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. Right. Of course, his quirk name is pop off. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's something where it could have permanent consequences on the fight because those things don't come off. Right. So, what would happen if Monoma? had Mineta's quirk, though. And then they stuck each other? Well, well, no, 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 no. But just, would Monoma grow balls That's actually a head? good question. He might not be able to take um, uh, the, 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 the morphic... The that, that, yeah, yeah, adapt morphic the, quirks. Uh, the body. The body, yeah. yeah. So he might not be able to take Monoma's. Uh, right. Wow, um, uh, Mineta's. Yeah. Um, but I yeah. made the same mistake earlier. Then, right, so. right. I just realized, actually, that Class 1A's team is actually really imbalanced. They oh, yeah. They have, have no scouting. They all have... Other than maybe Uraraka. Yeah, yeah. Uraraka can help them scout. But, yeah, sh she's... No real mobility? I mean... No, Deku, Deku. Well, right, right, uh, sorry, mobile. sorry. Other than Deku. 
Right. Yeah, Deku doesn't have scouting either, so... Right. Because, you know... Right. Bakugo had people that could keep up with him, mm -hmm. right? Deku doesn't. probably doesn't. Nope. So, unless unless they do the thing of Uraka making them all float and then Deku carries them, you know... Yeah, but then she can't make herself float without the... Yeah, she doesn't need to. Makes them all float, and then... Oh, and then they pick Deku's, her up. Deku just, just picks her up, you know? And then she can be all like, oh, Deku-kun, right? Well, 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 right. But what if they actually follow a little bit of Baku's strategy once Deku's, I'm going to zip around and do stuff on my own, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. and they come back, and then it's a thing of where then they create this, like... <laughs> Power Rangers, like, morphing, no, mighty morphing, like, combined together. I'm just saying, I would love to see a, and an Uraraka from above. Yeah, yeah, know? an Uraraka, Mina, Mineta, and Deku just ball moving around. Just throwing. bombarding shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, just acid and, and, and sticky balls and everything. It's <laughs> that would be so cool. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. But y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion. If you want to see the full-length timer version of the reaction, go check out the link in the description below for our Patreon. You can get on early access. I mean, no, sorry. We don't have early access because right. we're watching these week to week. Uh, but any level of support there gets you access to our Discord where you can chat with us and the community there about this anime, uh, about the show, about <laughs> anime in general. And also be sure to check out our Twitch channel. That's right. We stream every weekday. The info in the description. Yes, if any of that interests you, we'll see you there. But until then, we're Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we'll see you all next time. time.